We are now going to look briefly at the biblical connection between Satan and demons. We don't have time to consider the subject of demons in detail, but a good concise overview can be found in the paper Demon Possession and Exorcism in the New Testament by Dunn, D-U-N-N, and Twelfth Tree. I will put a link to this paper on my blog. To summarize, the Jews in Jesus' day saw demons as invisible manifestations of evil in the world, also known as evil spirits. The most well-known Bible passage linking demons with Satan is the Beelzebul controversy, recorded in Mark 3, Matthew 12, and Luke 11. You may want to pause the video now and read one or more of these accounts. Faced with the reality of Jesus' exorcisms, some of the scribes said, following Mark's account, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he casts out the demons. Jesus responded that this would mean Satan was against himself, which, as for a kingdom or a house, is self-defeating. Christadelphians argue that Jesus would never have endorsed belief in a pagan false god, as Beelzebub is described in 2 Kings 1. Rather, they say, Jesus assumed the scribe's point for sake of argument to show its self-contradiction, but did not actually affirm the existence of any prince of demons. Consider, however, the following observations. Firstly, Jesus' opponents were monotheistic as he was. So they also could not have been referring to an actual god when they accused him of possession by Beelzebub. In fact, the word they used is not Beelzebub, but Beelzebul. Some scholars think this subtle change shifted the meaning of the god's name from god of flies to god of dung. Thus the Jews had formed a nickname for the ruler of the demons based on a slur of this pagan god's name. How this happened, we can only speculate, but it is probably due to the Jews' tendency to attribute idolatry to demonic influence. Secondly, it is correct that Jesus assumed the scribe's point to show its self-contradiction. However, observe that it was Jesus himself, not the scribes, who introduced Satan into the dialogue. He apparently preferred the term Satan to Beelzebul, probably favoring a well-defined term with a biblical foundation rather than an ambiguous nickname of pagan origin. He used the word Beelzebul only when referring to their accusation. But in fact, Satan was at the center of Jesus' response. He implicitly e equated Satan with Beelzebul, this is especially clear in Luke 11, verse 18. So it is Jesus himself who provides the connection between Satan and demons in this passage. Finally, Jesus not only made a negative argument to prove he was not working with Satan. In his final parable about binding the strong man, he made a positive argument that he was working against Satan. Binding the strong man probably refers to Jesus' provisional victory over Satan in the temptation's encounter, and plundering his house refers to casting out demons. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record Jesus performing his first exorcisms shortly after the temptations in the wilderness. And Jesus again linked exorcisms to the defeat of Satan in Luke 10, 17-20. In summary, in Jesus' understanding, Satan was the ruler of the demons. His rule was coming to an end, not because Satan had risen up against himself, as the scribe's logic implied, but because one stronger than he, Jesus, had come. Jesus had put Satan in check and was now on the offensive against his demonic subordinates.